All right, listen, first of all, I know I've been gone for way too long. Life has just gotten in the way. It's been hard for me to make YouTube videos, but we are back, baby. Give me a W in the chat because today's match is absolutely one of the craziest ones I've had in Scarlet and Violet. And you already know with the DLC coming, you boys got to knock the rust off and get practice. So let's get into it. So I've got myself a really fun team here. I honestly just kind of threw some stuff together that I felt like using that seemed pretty fun. I also haven't even tried out some of this stuff yet, like uh, the Hisuian Triangle over here, the absolute legend. He is round, wooden, and here to party. So he's going to end up leading off with the Grafai Eye. Goes for that parting shot turn one, as I'm kind of fine with that. Drops my special attack, but it is going to allow me to get a little Volt Switch action on whatever they decide to bring in, which turned out to be the Breloom. I am afraid of Breloom. He's got extendable ass arms, and this thing hits you a spore. It could be like a Swords Dance, Mock Punch kind of thing, and I need to assess this threat immediately. So. Of course, my answer comes in the form of Ghostly Typhlosion. I also do have the Galarian Moltres in the back, but I do want to go into the Typhlosion mostly just to kind of see how they assess this threat. Of course, uh, Eruption is going to do a lot to anything, but he does have a couple of good checks in the back in the form of Vaporeon, and then something even like the Tyranitar with the Sandstorm. So I decided to just go for that Eruption. I don't want to get crazy on the overpredictions, and like I said, just kind of see what he wants to do to assess the, the Typhlosion with my crazy ass... Fire tentacles turns out goes into the Vaporeon um, And that thing obviously just takes negative damage uh, from the eruption there So I'm honestly fine with that mostly just because I know I can just easily hard switch right into Quagsire It kind of is my check to Vaporeon his Vaporeon is my check to Typhlosion It's a rock paper scissors shit going on and I just decided to go into the Quagsire I do want to mainly prioritize getting up my stealth rock because Try to limit switches a little bit, and I come in, he does try to water down my balls, and that is solid. I just absorb him. Uh, water absorb rather than unaware. Kind of comes in clutch in matchups like this, but uh, now I can just go right for that stealth rock here, as obviously Vaporeon does have to get out of there. And just goes right back into the Breloom. I didn't want to go for the Toxic, just in case this was the play, because of course Breloom is my mortal enemy as, you know, a water ground boy. So... Uh, this thing's over here with its Poison Heal, which kind of tells me it's more of a, an interest. I might even be like a Leech Seed type of set. I decide to go into the Electrode here. I'm thinking he likely just goes for Spore here uh, on this turn. It's kind of the obvious play. Unfortunately, I'm actually not Terra Ice with the Terra Blast, uh, so I can't hit this thing that hard in return. And it turns out he ends up going for Substitute. So now I'm definitely staring into a Sub Leech Seed kind of Breloom, and that's... It's kind of worst case scenario because now I'm like, okay, I basically now just have to like Thunderbolt and try to break the substitute. With the choice specs, it should be able to, um, but it's not going to be able to do enough once that sub breaks, especially after that poison heal. So I do go for that specs T-Bolt. It does break the beanbag as now this thing is free to kind of do whatever it wants. Ends up going for the leech seat, likely predicted me to go into uh, something like my... Uh, my Galarian Moltres is kind of the, the best option I would have had there. But I just stayed in because I need to break that substitute because this thing loses me a lot of momentum behind the sub. And now I find myself in a spot where I can't really switch out and I'm feeling like Thunderbolt is a two-hit KO. So I do go for that. He ends up going for the Brick Break, splits my ass in half, and get, does get the critical hit to knock me out. So that is actually really bad because this Electrode was super nice. Uh, for a lot of the threats on their team, it does great against the Tyranitar, um, it does amazing against the Vaporeon, and now I'm kind of in a spot where at least I was able to chip the Breloom down to where uh, it's easy to take care of. And now without any Stealth Rock on the field, you best believe my ass is going right back into Tyranitar, and I saw that his answer is uh, going to be the Vaporeon, so I decided to go for the Shadow Ball, expecting that thing to come in, thinking maybe, you know, I do some decent chip here, maybe grab a special defense drop and call it a day. Uh, unfortunately, Vaporeon does come in, and uh, it does nothing. The thing is incredibly specially defensive, and I might as well have just clicked Eruption. So I do obviously need to conserve uh, this Typhlosion. Scarf Typhlosion is kind of one of my win conditions, and I really want to hang on to this thing. So I do have to switch. I'm going to go right back into the Quagsire. I kind of have no reason not to. Quagsire is like, hey, we're water buddies, and he does end up going for a Shadow Ball of his own right to my balls, and... Um, that's actually going to do a decent chunk. Luckily, it doesn't get a spadef drop. Uh, but now I'm in a spot where I don't actually have recovery on this thing, and I kind of just have to go for an Earthquake to both uh, grab some chip, and then also, if he does go into the Breloom, that thing dies as well. So now he goes for the Ice Beam. I'm able to live it with 69. Nice. And fire off an Earthquake in return. Doesn't quite knock it out, which is actually unfortunate. Uh, I'm mostly a physically defensive Quagsire, um, and so, you know, I'm not able to, to grab that kill there. But... 
What really sucks about taking this kind of chip on my Quagsire is it was kind of my best answer uh, against his Tyranitar. So it's just kind of a trade-off I have to make here. I basically just trade Quagsire for the ability to basically uh, pick off the Vaporeon, which is honestly fine because Vaporeon was kind of a real menace to my Typhlosion. So at least now I can get a free switch into Baikal and <laughs> go for the speediest U-turn on this side of the fucking Mississippi. I go for the U-turn just in case of a switch so I can try to grab some momentum. Uh, if not, it's fine. I can just basically knock out the Vaporeon and then decide to bring in whatever I want. What does suck about that is now he's able to see what I go into and then can grab a matchup, but uh, I'm honestly fine with that. So I just tuck the old Regenerator Dragon in the back. But looking at my options, they're all kind of questionable. Now I want to save the Moltres for later. I, I definitely don't want that, that thing to go to waste. I also don't want to go into the Typhlosion because then he can just bring in his Tyranitar. So I'm thinking I'm going to go into Mr. T and I, I had big plans for this Tyranitar, but sometimes you just got to try to get shit going. There's never going to be a perfect time and as good a time as any. So they decide on my Tyranitar, they're going to go into the Galarian Zapdos. Oh, Bigfoot over here. And I'm thinking ordinarily, you know, this is extremely threatening as uh, I do not want to take a fighting move, but I'm actually Terra Flying, uh, which is a lot of the time what you're going to see Tyranitar is running these days. Uh, so I'm going to go for that Terra and go for a Dragon Dance. I figure, all right, Tyranitar, it is, it is time, buddy. We're going to try to bait the fighting move here, grab a Dragon Dance, uh, and then I can Terra Blast and try to get a little little mini, mini sweep going. So I put some balloons on my head like a doofus um, and I'm actually feeling like I'm in a pretty good spot here. So this thing actually ends up going for the U-turn. Good play because you know it's likely that I'm gonna switch Tyranitar out there and then they can you know grab a matchup but I do actually stay in and now I'm gonna go for the Dragon Dance. Now I do see uh, the Grafii come in with his dipped ass finger and this thing has proved to be a little bit of a problem. Honestly annoying ass little fella this bastard can come in in basically, there's a number of things this thing can do. But I go for the Dragon Dance, and now I'm just kind of stuck to see what this thing wants to do. Of course, this thing is running the Prankster ability, but if nothing too crazy happens, you know, I'm a plus one Tyranitar here with uh, the ability to definitely knock this thing out. So I eat some leftovers, heat some Black Sludge, and I decide to just go for the Terra Blast here. I have no real sense in switching, I kind of just have to go for it. It turns out he is going to go for what I fear most, and that is the Prankster Encore. It locks me into Dragon Dance. And now I'm over here stuck dancing with balloons on my head like some type of fucked up birthday party and I've been got. The, the U-turn play into the Encore uh, was definitely kind of what the doctor ordered. But at least Tyranitar is still healthy. I have used up my Terra, uh, which does lose me that kind of element of surprise and I can't Terra anything else. But um, at least, you know, I haven't taken damage and this Tyranitar is still looking nice. I do want to kind of conserve this thing. Uh, and another Baikal can likely just switch in here, and I, I don't know what type of attacking this Grafii has, um, but I know that you know, I can bring this thing in, I can chip it with the Dragon Claw, uh, two of them should be able to do the job. So, uh, in comes the Cyclozar. He's going to end up going for the Super Fang there, does knock you to exactly half. Um, and now we've seen Parting Shot, Encore, Super Fang, now I'm thinking there's got to be... Um, there's something else in the back. I don't know what type of attack this thing might have. It might not be anything other than Super Fang, but I'm just going to go for that Dragon Claw. I'm about fast as shit, and I go for that uh, to be able to knock it down to well below half. So he does end up going for the Super Fang once again, reveals that that is going to be his only kind of attacking here. And now he's kind of opened himself up to get a nice little pivot here. Although I did get this thing chipped down to the point where, you know, another Dragon Claw kills it. I can easily take it out with anything else I have on my team. Um, and I do just decide to go for that other Dragon Claw just in case he didn't go for the parting shot. Uh, it would be wild un wildly unfortunate to knock myself out with like my life orb. So I do go for another Dragon Claw here. It does in fact parting shot. And with that drop in attack, I can't really Dragon Claw my ass out of a wet paper bag. And he ends up going into the Tyranitar. So I've been afraid of his Tyranitar for pretty much this entire time. Because now it's in a spot where with my attack dropped and my life orb in the sandstorm, I'm not going to be able to stay around for long. And if this thing starts to want to set up. I don't know if it has a different Terra. I don't know what this young Godzilla wants to do. I do actually end up living the Life Orb and the Sandstorm there, and I'm feeling like if I hard switch here on a Dragon Dance, I'm kind of screwed. Plus, I'm going to go for the Ice Spinner, thinking, hey, maybe he goes for that Terra flying just like mine. I hit him with a super effective attack, uh, but that is not what happens as he ends up actually just, you know, staying Stay in Normie as I knock myself out to my Life Orb now, but he shows me he ends up going for the Dark Pulse. Uh, it tells me a few things. Luckily, at least he didn't set up, and I should be um, faster with a few mons on my side. And also, he's a special attacking one, so maybe my Tyranitar has the best matchup possible. Uh, I am actually going to be plus speed nature with that Earthquake. If I can grab that outspeed, 
uh, I should be able to easily knock this thing out if he doesn't go for the Terra. So, in comes the Tyranitar. I tell him, hey, you can't eat berries. Looking a little, a little thick over there. So I do go for the Earthquake here. I'm thinking it could potentially be a speed tie. Uh, if he is going to be a plus speed nature maxed out as well, it is a speed tie. Unfortunately for him, I do actually outspeed. It could have been the balloons making me light on my feet out here. Uh, it does take care of their Tyranitar. So that is amazing. Honestly, a huge threat out of the way. And um, interested to see what that special attacking T-Tar would have done. Like a power gem. I think I would have been able to take uh, an attack from that thing. But I'm feeling really good because that does open up my Typhlosion a little bit more. He kind of loses that switch in. Although he does have the Gudra in the back. Which is still, you know, a problem. You know who's also a problem is old Bigfoot over here still. Uh, and so this thing comes in. But I'm thinking, actually, I probably can just go for a Terror Blast here. And I don't think it can knock me out. Goes for the Brave Bird. Tyranitar has been eating a shit ton of berries. I am thick as hell, able to live it just barely, uh, and then fire a nice little flying Terror Blast right back at him. So Tyranitar, although he has fallen, this thing has been top tier for its entire life. This is the first time literally ever it's not <laughs> in the top tier. Um, Titar is still a massive threat, although it is hilarious watching this dude get hit by his, his own Sandstorm. I guess technically it's not my Sandstorm, but it was the other Tyranitar's. Listen, I feel like if you have the Sandstream ability, you should just not be able to get hit by Sandstorm, even if you change type. But that's just me. I don't know. But back comes the Grafii. I'm thinking Super Fang's all this thing can do to me. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. So I just decided to go for the Terror Blast. He is down to three Pokemon. He's got this, Breloom, and a Gudra in the back. Turns out he's actually going to go with the, the Copycat, which is actually amazing. He hits me with my own Terra Blast, uh, and down goes Tyranitar. This, I told you, this monkey has been a real McAsshole this entire time. He's actually like an eye eye. Now, he's a monkey. Listen, all right. So Sandstorm goes away, and now I've got to figure out a plan. I'm thinking to myself, hold on. There's something I haven't been thinking about this entire time, and that is the fact that my Moltres is actually dark type. And if you're familiar, uh, the Pokemon with a prankster ability cannot use uh, moves against a dark type. So I'm going to go in here and go for a nasty plot, hoping... Uh, that I can catch him slipping a little bit here. I am, you know, obviously worried about a Super Fang, but at least I know that that can't kill me. Does go for the Super Fang, knocks me down to half, as I think some nasty thoughts. And Moltres is trying to save the match here. Looking majestic as shit over here, hoping that I can pull this one out. So, uh, I've now got my, got my nasty plot up, feeling powerful. I'm just going to go for that Fiery Wrath, hoping that he goes for the Encore. He does! You cannot use Encore on a Dark-type if you're using it with the Prankster ability. Uh, so I grab a lucky break there, finish this thing off with a Fiery Wrath, and now it's my Moltres against two Pokemon. He has that Breloom, who's mostly dead, and he has the Gudra, who's about specially defensive his tits, who should be able to, you know, take at least one attack. So, in comes Gelatinous, looking, you know, gelatinous and thick as shit. So, uh, I do just go for this Fiery Wrath here, hope for as much damage as possible. I wasn't able to actually activate my ability to grab that special attack boost, but... Two is looking like it's going to be able to kill. They go for the Dragon Claw, which allows me to live with 23 HP. Now activates my Berserk, and uh, we are absolutely going Berserk on these hoes. Galarian Moltres is one of the most fun Pokemon to play with. I guess if you can get it to work, that is. But one more Fiery Wrath is going to take care of the Gudra, and now the last Pokemon being the Breloom. I do still have my Typhlosion in the back, but you can see that the Battle Timer is really ticking down. The Game Freak, give us more time. But... The Galarian Moltres endgame is pretty much exactly what I could have hoped for. In comes Breloom, takes some Stealth Rock damage. We have 10 seconds left in the match, and a Fiery Wrath is going to take care of it. Having the Typhlosion in the back would have sealed it for me regardless if it was Mach Punch. Uh, but down goes the Breloom, and that is going to be the game. Honestly, that was a super close one, and I had a ton of fun hopping in this one. Um, so thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy, if there's anybody still out there, because I haven't uploaded in months. But your boy is back. Let me know. If you would like to see some more, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.